Okay, so uh, I decided to make some new box beams for my workbench. Uh, this is uh, basically my primary, primary workbench these days. Uh, I don't even have a, a fancy woodworking bench anymore. I just found it, it wasn't necessary, I wasn't using it anymore. And I like this system a lot better. This is actually based on a uh, box beam workbench system that was uh, represented in fine woodworking many years ago. Uh, which is just basically a couple of flat saw horses and uh, uh, box beams uh, with uh, a, a kind of a high friction material on them. Uh, I've kind of evolved it over the years. This is the third time I've rebuilt them. And uh, what I decided to do was to, rather than try to put a friction material in there for holding things while you work on it, which really didn't work all that great, uh, that I would instead uh, make them work more like the Festool MFT system with a series of 20 millimeter holes based on the 32 millimeter spacing system actually at 96 millimeter uh, square grid and use the Festool clamping elements in there which are both the um, uh, the, uh, the hold down clamps and then the squeeze clamps which pretty much takes the place of all of the clamps that you normally have on a regular workbench uh, so, for this iteration, I decided to go ahead and CNC the box beams as far as the, the drilling of the holes and some of the cutouts and everything, which just made it a lot easier to do. Um, so, I'm going to show you the process for how I went about and did that here. Now, the first thing I needed to do, obviously, was to laminate the box beams with Formica, which I decided to do to give it a nicer surface, and it also makes it a glue-proof surface so that when I'm gluing up projects, so I get some glue spills on it, then it scrapes off very easily. So I went ahead and got a sheet of uh, Formica that they call Bright Green, and I contact cemented that onto the box beams. It's a fairly straightforward process, and there's plenty of videos out there showing you how to do that on the internet. Now, once the Formica was laminated on there, I needed to CNC the holes in place. And the, the big problem is that my machine only has a capacity of 4 feet by 2 feet, and the box beam is obviously 8 feet long. Now, I can't do it in two 4-foot sections because of the way my axes are turned on the machine. The y-axis is actually the 4-foot axis, and the x-axis is the 2-foot axis. So what I needed to do was cut it in multiple sections and I'm going to give credit for this to uh, the CNC Nuts channel on YouTube. You can look it up and he shows how to do that using a different program which actually has the functionality for multiple segments cut into it. Now Fusion 360 doesn't have that but I was able to get it to work uh, using this process I'm about to detail. It only works for like doing holes and things like that. It wouldn't have worked if I had a, a 2D contour to do unfortunately. Uh, so I may have to just get a, a different program if I want to do this in the future on another project here. So the key here was to model the cam operation so that I had a positioning hole to be able to slide the box beam down on the x-axis in between operations and relocate the origins and, and to be in alignment with the, the rest of the holes that were drilled. And what you can see in this picture here is that I have located a, a point in the middle of, of one of the holes that is not going to be drilled in the first operation. So you see I've got five holes that are going to be drilled and then on the sixth hole I have a, a new point there which I want to slide down and make that the zero zero point for the second operation. Uh, so what I did was I put a cam operation in and the first thing I had to do was to go to that point and drill a hole the same diameter as the bit that's doing the hole cutting and that gives me a hole to position underneath the bit when I reposition it. So uh, it cuts that hole and then the second thing it does is it goes and it cuts a series of, of regular holes in, a, in a, a, like five rows of it and then when it's done with that operation what I do is I simply slide the, I tell the, the CNC machine to go to zero, go to the zero zero origin and then I slide the surface, the, the box beam surface down put that hole underneath where the bit is at zero zero, I actually lower it down to make sure that I've got the bit going into the hole and that means that zero zero is now located for the next set of five rows of holes there uh, so it can cut them uh, just continuing down the board there. Now the way that I am able to locate it on the x-axis accurately is that I have the piece positioned against these parf dogs which 
register in holes that I have drilled into my waste table on the CNC machine. And they, because they were cut by the CNC machine, they're always in a perfect alignment grid pattern with each other. So two of these acts as a fence system, if you will. So I just slide the side of the piece along, register it against those two PARF dogs, and I'm assured that it's aligned on the Y axis correctly. Uh, and all we're doing is relocating the X axis here to to do those uh, those holes. So you, you drill the holes, you do the locator hole, you slide it down, put the locator hole underneath the bit, and then you just continue on cutting along the uh, the x-axis there. So here is the top of the box beam clamped in place on the CNC machine. You can see I've got it supported uh, on the outfeed side with a roller table and registered against the PARF dogs. Here's the program in Mach 3 and it's going to run first the, the drill operation. You'll see it move down and drill the locator hole for the next operation to continue on. It's just going to do a, a deep drilling operation on it where it keeps tapping out. This is a down feed bit, so you can't go too deep before it wants to. It builds up pressure, and you'll see it actually blow out sawdust there as a result of that. So it does a deep drilling operation, and it's going to drill that hole. Now, it didn't have to go all the way through like I made it. I, I wasn't thinking when I did this. You can just tap it like a quarter of an inch deep if you want to. Uh, drills the hole, and then you'll see it move down and start drilling the first series of 20-millimeter uh, holes for the actual clamping system. So here it is, just doing a circular operation in Fusion 360. Drills all the way down at the end. The, the center actually pops out uh, when it's done. And there he goes. And then he's just gonna go on and do the rest of them. So he's gonna drill a total of 15 holes in this operation. And then the program ends. Then we just reposition the piece and run the program over again uh, as we keep moving the board down there. Now, the other thing that I did was I actually uh, made a cam operation that reverses the x-axis so that I can uh, drill half of the board going in this direction then I can flip it around and drill the other half going back out the back side of the table there so I don't have to keep moving my support table around there and so here you can see that it, uh, it has drilled the first set of holes there's 15 of them there and now he's drilling another locator hole before he moves down to start drilling the holes. And as soon as he does that, you'll notice that it locates itself right over the original locator hole, which because zero, zero is the center of the first hole in the rows. And he's actually gonna just completely eliminate the locator hole so we don't have any artifacts left over. So this looks really nice. Um, in reality, it could have been done faster with the uh, Festool rail system and the router uh, that's designed to drill these holes. Uh, but what it did do is it saved my shoulder uh, so it wasn't sore from all the repetitive hole drilling at the end of the day. It also was able to chamfer the holes for me. And uh, while this was doing this operation, I was able to take down the Christmas tree. So there's your, your added work there. So here are all the pieces laid out, ready to be assembled. I used the domino joiner for locator holes to mostly for alignment to keep the edges uh, nice and tight and uh, just glued it together clamped it up and here's my box beams all ready to go now uh, because I used half inch plywood for this uh, the the clamping elements for Festool are designed to be used with three quarter inch surface and so I had to uh, 3d print a little spacer here that goes underneath the table when you've got the clamping elements tightened down with the knobs there and that keeps it nice and tight even against a half inch plywood. The other half of this project will be CNCing some new tripod sawhorses that I found on the Festool Owner Group. Uh, the key difference is that mine will have a slot along the top to hold a T-track uh, and a corresponding T-track mounted on the front of the box beams just below the holes on the side there and those will allow me to lock together the beams to the sawhorses with an angle bracket that uh, locks it all together as a single unit so that you can make it work like a solid workbench if you want, but then if I need to space the beams across apart on the sawhorses, I can still do that.